O-E-M-N, stands for Oracle Enterprise Media Data Management. Hello and welcome. My name is Sam Hijazi. I'm a senior sales consultant at Oracle Data Integration Solutions, EMEA team. In this session, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about Oracle Enterprise Media Data Management. Following that, I'll be doing an interactive demo to show you the main functionalities that make Oracle Enterprise Media Data Management a truly unique solution. Let's talk about the definition of metadata and metadata management. According to Wikipedia, metadata is data about data. According to Wikipedia, metadata management involves managing data about other data, whereby this other data is generally referred to as content. Let's give an example to make this more clear. If we look at a database system, we have schemas, and under those schemas, we have tables, and each of the tables, we have definition. The definition includes a set of columns, and those columns have data types, they have data length, and other properties as well. This is metadata. It's describing how the data will look like. Now, if you look at the records under a certain table, then, then this is the other data or the content. Why do we need a metadata management solution in organizations? It's important to have a metadata management solution to answer different questions. How do we know what we know about our data is the main question. A metadata management solution shall help you to know what is the impact if a certain change occurs. A metadata management solution shall help you to achieve data governance. It should give you answers when you want to know how a certain figure was calculated. It shall, it shall reduce the risk of changes happening to your data structure. What will happen if this column is changed or this table structure has been changed? Who will be affected? What kind of reports will be affected? What kind of applications and users as well? It doesn't stop there. It should cover the whole architecture of your organization from BI development, from system admins, to application users, to executive levels, and data scientists as well. If Oracle has introduced Oracle Enterprise Metadata Management, or OEMM. OEMM is a solution that will help you to harvest and catalog the metadata from virtually any metadata provider that you have. After you catalog and harvest all the metadata in one single repository for OEMM, you'll be able to stitch those metadata together. The stitching will help you to see the full architectural view of your current environment. That means you'll be able to see the full flow of data from different models, databases, analytics tools, ETL engines, and so on. OEMM is equipped with interactive searching capabilities and browsing capabilities for the metadata that you have. It will provide you with full data lineage and impact analysis for any given source. That means that you do not have to know how the systems or applications or databases are running from business perspective. You'll be able to go through, browse all the metadata underlying those system without physically accessing those. You're just browsing the metadata that Oracle Enterprise Metadata Management have harvested and cataloged. OEMM is not only an Oracle-based solution. It's truly heterogeneous. You'll be able to harvest different kinds of databases from different vendors. You'll be able to harvest metadata from different ETL providers, from different BI applications and from different modeling applications and so on. OEMM is part of Oracle's data integration solution portfolio. 
a complete desktop feed offering for enterprise data integration. With Oracle Data Integration Solution, you'll be able to cover the whole data integration aspect and means for your organization. As you can see from the slide, we've got Oracle Data Integrator. This one is for both data movement, complex aggregation and transformation functionality. We have Oracle Golden Gate. This is our real-time data replication, synchronization, disaster recovery solution. And then we have Oracle Enterprise Data Quality, our data quality solution to help you cleanse, deduplicate, parse, and do different quality tasks for your data. And of course, the introduction of the newly metadata management solution, Oracle Enterprise Metadata Management. And at last, the Oracle Active Data Guard, our disaster recovery solution for Oracle Enterprise database. Those technologies are truly heterogeneous. They will allow you to connect to cloud services, to applications, to different databases from different vendors, and they are big data enabled as well. So you will have yourself covered from data integration perspective and data governance as well. Those solutions are future ready, will give you the maximum possible performance and of course, they will give you the fastest time to value. Let's have a look at Oracle Enterprise Media Data Management Logical Architecture. On this slide, on the right side, this can be any given organization architecture. As you see from the bottom up, we've got the data sources. Those data sources could be file-based, they could be cloud, it could be big data, relational databases, or applications. On the second or the middle layer, we could have an ETL tool, data quality, data screen, integration applications, and data enrichment. And on top, then we have the actionable information that is being facilitated by data discovery and analytics tools. As you can see, those tools or data and data integration and data sources could be Oracle and non-Oracle. On the left side, we have the Oracle Enterprise Native Data Management. And there is two arrows. There is one pointing from bottom to top and the other one from top to bottom. If you want to run an impact analysis and see what will happen if a certain change happens on our applications, on our analytics, data integration tools, data discovery, et cetera, et cetera, then this is called impact analysis. So with OEMM, you may run impact analysis on any of the sources that you see on the bottom. The impact analysis can be run at any stage, actually, but it makes more sense if you want to see who will be impacted if a certain change happens. And those changes normally happen on data sources, the physical data sources, on the data layer, and at the data integration layer as well. Now, if you want to trace data lineage, how data was created, and the full flow, of the data when we call this data lineage. For example, in a certain Oracle BI report, you want to trace how this report was generated, how a certain KPI was generated, then you may simply run a data lineage on that report and it will show you the full data flow through different systems, from the BI perspective, through data integration, through different data sources. OAMM has a metadata repository which will collect all those metadata from different metadata providers that you select. After that, it will do the fetching in order to facilitate the impact analysis and the data lineage analysis as well. 
On the top of OA and MN, you can see that there is a business glossary. And this is something that ships with OE and MN. It's not a separate product. With business glossary, you may build with glossaries, definitions, terms, domains, and such from your current model, or you can create brand new glossaries for your definition. With the business glossary, you'll be able to do also what we call thematic linking. So a business glossary term can be linked to a physical data source, for instance. That way you can run also data lineage and impact analysis to your business glossary. So it will make more sense for you what a certain column, for example, in a certain table means. Oracle Enterprise Mini Data Management Physical Architecture is very simple. As you can see, we have the Metadata Repository. This is a central repository for OEMM itself. So it will hold the metadata for OEMM and it will have the harvested metadata from different providers that you will harvest from. On top of that, we have the OEMM engine. And this engine will have the repository manager, the metadata browsing and searching capabilities, the business glossary, and of course, the lineage and the impact analyzer. To access OEMM, you need a browser. So virtually from any supported browser, you can connect to the HTTP of OEMM and then be able to do different kinds of activities that OEMM facilitates for you. As you see also on the slide, we have the data sources, the ETL or ELP, the VI and analytics, business glossaries, enterprise conceptual models, Hadoop, and of course other sources as well, which will all feed the Oracle Enterprise Metadata repository with their metadata. Let's have a quick look on the main features OEMM is shipped with. OEMM has a graphical browser for data models diagram. You'll be able to easily navigate through models that you harvest in OEMM. You'll be able to see with a bird eye view the metadata underlying the harvested model. You'll be able to do zoom in and zoom out and moving around complex metadata models easily. In OEM, you will be able also to do keyword-based search in all metadata that you have harvested. For example, if you have harvested a set of models, say from uh, IDBMS and VI and ODI and other tools as well, and they are all under one configuration, then you'll be able to search easily for any related term. OEMM will do full index for all the terms that has been harvested inside the metadata repository. OEMM also has the versioning capabilities, so you'll be able to easily compare a version of a model with another. This will give you a clear view of what has been changed, so you'll be able to see exactly the change and the description of the change between two different models. In OEMM, there is also social collaboration for stewardship for different teams. So different teams will be able to do comments. They will be able to give importance by starting, starting system. They will be able to set the status of a certain term in, in a business glossary, for example, or in a command. And this facilitates for life cycle management. You'll be able to see an end-to-end -end data flow architecture view of the whole architecture in your organization. So if you have harvested databases, if you have harvested uh, ETL tools, BI, analytics, etc., etc., and then stitch them together, OEMM will automatically draw a diagram that shows the architecture and the flow of data between different systems. You'll be able also to do an, an, an annotation and you'll be able to 
have labels and we'll be able also to get bookmarks to make things easier to share with the different teams and to have better diagramming and modeling capabilities. In OEMN, you'll be able also to do drilling into formulas and calculations that ideally can be harvested from ETL and BI reporting engines. So, for instance, if you harvested an ODI mapping and you want to see what is the formula or the aggregation or the uh, maybe the filtering or join happen inside that mapping, you will be able to drill down inside OEMN itself to see what's happening there. With OAMM, you'll be able to find the data for humans from report flyers. So you'll be able to have fully visualized column and calculation level dependencies across systems, databases, and reporting views. And at last, the business lottery, which is a built-in and not a separate add-on. You'll be able to go beyond the database and the channels link business terminologies across metadata models and systems. You'll be able to give definitions, define keywords, to update the status of the certain terms for life cycle management, start abbreviation, and even have documentation and relations built inside the business flow for itself. So in summary, Oracle Enterprise Metadata Management will help you to harvest metadata from different metadata providers. It will help you to explore those metadata in order to achieve fully, truly data governance. The main point is the rich text search and metadata browsing capabilities. All ANN has a simple and clean user interface to make it a smooth user experience. It has model and diagram visualization capabilities. It will show you full end-to-end data flow and lineage between different systems. It has stewardship and team collaboration capabilities to have more efficiency within your organization and different teams. It has metadata tagging and labeling to make things more easier to find. It has, again, collaboration capabilities, such as multimedia attachments, so you'll be able to upload documents, videos, presentation codes to a certain object with an OEMM. OEMM make it easy to make URL link references for emailing, blogging, and social networking. OEMM is industry compliant, so you'll be able to be compliant with different and industry standards. And Oracle Enterprise Metadata Management is Oracle integrated, so you'll be able to easily integrate with most of Oracle technologies and harvest its metadata in order to run data lineage, impact analysis, and so on. OAMM has support for all popular platforms from different vendors. As you can see, we natively can connect to Microsoft, to IBM, to MicroStrategy, to SAP, to Hadoop, to Teradata, EMC, Informatica, and much more. Even with no native connectivity to one of the vendors, you'll be able with simple GDBC, ODBC connections to connect virtually to any metadata provider and harvest its metadata. Let's now jump into the demo and see how OEMM looks like and what can be done via OEMM itself. Main login screen for Oracle Enterprise Metadata Management. So let's use my credentials to log in into OEMM. As you can see, this is the landing page after you log in into OEMM. For the purpose of uh, this recording, I have created a small project and I called it demo. So on the left side, you'll be able to see the repository. The repository is where everything that you work on will be uh, stored. 
So you can create as many folders as you want. You can rearrange them. You can have different uh, structures for the folders in order to make things uh, more neat to deal with. And on the right side, we have the properties panel, which will display the properties of any object that you select. So let's open the demo folder that I've created. As you see, uh, I have harvested the four models, and those four models is the dimensional data warehouse. This is basically an also uh, dimensional data warehouse database. And I have harvested an OLTP uh, schema from Oracle database as well. And I have harvested Oracle data integrator, and uh, it's called here low to dimensional data warehouse. And uh, at the end, I have harvested the uh, BI report. Uh, which is uh, coming from Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. Let's have a look at one of the models that I have harvested, which is the Dimensional Data Warehouse. If we double click on this model, we'll be able to see all the harvested objects underneath. So for this one, I have harvested a schema called BI Sample, and you can navigate through this schema and see all the tables that have uh, been harvested. If we go to the OLTP source, you'll be able to navigate through the same, but of course, uh, we have a different schema. It's called OLTP source. The third harvested source is the ODI, which is dual dimensional data warehouse. As you can see, I'm able to see the full repository of ODI, and it looks pretty much familiar to what it, uh, it, it looks and feels inside ODI itself. So if you're an ODI developer, for instance, this will be very familiar and you'll be very comfortable in uh, navigating through different objects within this model. So we've got the connections, the physical connections, and we've got the models, uh, we've got the projects, and I have listed a project called Lineage Demo, and if we expand that, we will see that we have uh, three mappings that then have listed. If I want to see any of those graphically, it's very simple. So if I want to see the LD audit in a graphical way, I simply double click on it. Uh, you'll be able to see first uh, uh, the content in a list format, which is you know tells you the, the sources and the targets and the function aggregations happening inside your mapping. And if you want to see that graphically, you simply click on the data flow overview and it will show something like this. So in this case, we have the sources that is being aggregated inside ODI, and it is being loaded eventually to some target table in my dimensional data warehouse database. So we have here, uh, for example, the column amount. If I click on it, I'll be able to see any operation happening there. So and as you can see here, we have uh, some operation uh, between uh, multiple columns and then multiplied by another column. If we go to the join here, we'll be able to see the condition which we have joined the columns on. So in this case, we are joining src underscore orders with src underscore order line, and the joining is on the column uh, order ID. So you'll be able to see all the details the same way you're able to see them inside ODI, but it will be summarized, it will be more, um, let's say, uh, business-oriented view. So you don't have all those different aggregations spread all over. They are all gathered in one central aggregation list in order to make it more easy to, to, to study, to, to look at, uh, to, to navigate it through as well. So let's close this model. Let's go to the last one, which is the DI report. Again, if, if, uh, if you are a BI uh, developer, if you use uh, OBI EE before, you know, this will look familiar to you. You'll, you, 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 you will have the same uh, look and feel of how objects look like uh, inside OBI EE itself. So we've got the connections, as you can see here, we've got the reports folder, and we've got uh, a report such as movie report and product report which I selected and harvested through the model. If I want to see things uh, either graphically or in much more detailed, I simply double click on that, and you'll be able to see the criteria, 
the report is using. You'll be able to see the report itself from layout perspective. So you'll be able to see the title, tables, and styles, all the components that, uh, that make that report and the presentation layer as well. If you want to see this graphically, it's very simple. We simply click on the data flow overview and you'll be able to see that in a graphical way. All right, this is very good. So in order to start building analysis around those models to see the lineage and impact and everything, we need to create what's called configuration. So configuration is like a container for all the models that you want to stitch together, that you want to link together in order to make further analysis of them. And for the purpose of this demo, I've created the sales reported application dash one configuration. Oof. If we open this uh, configuration, we'll be able to see the models that I have selected. So the process is pretty simple. You, you, you just create a new configuration, and then you drag and drop the models that you want. So in this case, I drag and drop the dimensional data we have, both the source, the load dimensional data we have, BI report. And there is also sales application business glossary and thematic mapping. Uh, for the business glossary, which I will describe later. So let's only focus on those four ads the moment. After I, I, I dragged and dropped my models, I fit them together, and uh, basically what I get is, is a full architectural diagram for, for my current uh, infrastructure or organization architecture. So as you can see, we have the OTP source, being, um, you know, ODI is extracting the data uh, that resides this all CP source. There's some transformation happening in ODI, and then uh, it's loading data into dimensional data or health. And then we have some BI report, which is built uh, on top of this dimensional data warehouse. So uh, I, uh, it's very simple here to understand the whole flow of my architecture. I mean, I can, I can easily see how data is moving from one place to another. Um, what you can do with OEMM is analysis uh, from meat data perspective. So you can uh, do lineage, you can do impact analysis as well. So let's start with lineage analysis and we'll do that in our BI report. So let's open the BI report model and let's go to the report that I want to show you lineage for, which is the product report. Let's see this graphically. So it's more visual for us. And let's set context to make the visibility um, more clear. All right, so in my report, I have the layout and I have table one. I have been asked by some person in the organization to see the lineage for this table, how this table uh, was built. To answer such question is very easy with OE and then you simply right click on the object, I'm clicking the table, you can go through the column level as well, but I, for this demo I will just go to the table object level and I go to trace lineage and I see the trace data lineage. And I select the options that I want, you may be able to see it in text, list format, or graph flow. Let's see it in graph flow uh, format and click on trace. As you can see, I'll have, I'll have a high level uh, description of the lineage. So, this BI report um, is taking data from my dimension data warehouse, and my dimension data warehouse is being fed from my all OTP source. So I've got the first flow from high level. If I want to expand this more, I simply start expanding the object that I have. So if I expanded the dimension of the house, I will be able to see all the objects that are involved in creating this report inside my dimension of the house. If I want to go step uh, back to the original source, I can expand that as well. And as you can see, I see that there are three tables from the old CP source involved in creating this report. If I expand those tables, I'll be able to see the columns within those tables that are involved in creating this report. So 
it's not all the columns, it's just one column from each from each table from the OCP uh, schema in my Oracle database. If I want to see further, you can simply just keep expanding and see what's happening and what's being involved. Um, a good thing to notice here is that we have some bolded line, and bolded line means there is some kind of EPO uh, happening behind the scene here. If you want to dig down deeper, it's very simple with OEMM. You can right click and you go to trace EPL details, and it will go directly to the mapping of ODI and show you what's happening there. So the column or the date is being aggregated inside ODI, and eventually it's being uh, loaded into that dimensional data warehouse. If you want to see the operation, you can expand the properties panel. We click on the column, and you'll be able to see all the properties that's happening with that column. So let's go back. So this this show me a full data range for the report that I have just showed you, and um, you can go through the report in a graphical way as well to see all the objects that involved for this range. If you want to do this in the other way, which is impact analysis, this works pretty much the same way, but in a reverse way. So if you open the OLTP source here, and we go to one of the schemas here, and we go to one of the tables, let's say I want to see the table order line, and I want to track the column amount, and the impact that has another object. So to do that, I simply right click and then say, okay, trace with the impact. And I want to see that graphically again, and I click on trace. Having that will show me all the objects that will be impacted if I simply change anything to this column, for example. So I open the dimensional with our house and I see that there's a table of being built behind this column, which is the revenue, the gross revenue, the revenue again, and some sample revenue table is in some sequel condition here. If we open the BI report, we'll be able also to see the end object that is that will be affected if I do any change to my column, which is on the table one, and I see that there is sales tax revenue Object that will be affected if I do anything there. The same thing here, you can also trace the ETL details. So there's some ETL happening here, so I simply right click and I go to trace ETL details. If I trace the ETL details, you'll be able to see the amount and you'll be able to see the operations being happening there. So let's close all the tabs that I have opened here and see some other feature of uh, OEMM. Let's look at this glossary. For the purpose of this recording, I've created a sample uh, business glossary and I call it Sales App Business Glossary. If we double click on that, you'll be able to see the contents of that glossary. Uh, in this glossary, there is a BI sample, which is being populated from dimension on this house. So what I did is basically drag and drop this model inside the glossary and it was uh, populated automatically. If we dig down into the BI sample, we'll be able to see all the terms that we have within the BI sample. You'll be able to see the definition, the keyword, and the term static. For the purpose of this demo, I have made some modification to two terms, which is the sample within your F and it's called text. So if you double click on the sample uh, revenue F, you'll be able to see more details about that term. So the definition is saying revenue fact table. And the status is currently candidate and the type is entity. So this is a table. If we scroll down to the relation, uh, relationship, you'll be able to see all the uh, columns that is contained uh, by this entity. So in this entity, we have the cost text, cost variable, et cetera, et cetera. If you go back to the BI sample and the reflect on the cost text, you'll be able to see also more information.
definition about the term and the definition here is saying fixed cost component and the state is called candidate and this is attribute and uh, as you can see in the relation chip here is saying contained by sample written with you can easily uh, navigate through those by simply clicking on them and it will navigate to the appropriate object and definition and see uh, more details about that term basically I've also created some new folder and I call this a uh, generalization. If we double click on that, uh, you'll see a term is called all scope. And the way I did this is very simple. I simply came to add and I said new term and I call this all scope. If I double click on that term, you'll be able to see the definition. So it's saying this is all cost related term. And currently the status is candidate and this is a business. So it's not an entity. And it's not an attribute, but it's a business uh, term. So to be more specific about this new term, new business term, I said, okay, um, I went down to the relationship, and I said, I want to have all the attributes that have uh, the word cost in them. So we have the cost spec, cost variable, fixed cost, and variable cost. And those are automatically, automatically mapped to the uh, physical attributes uh, that have been um, populated in the grocery from the model. So if I click on the cost spec, you'll be able to see the original term um, that have been uh, associated with that term. And in the relationship, you'll see, okay, more general, and it's all costs, which is, again, the generalized uh, business term that I have created. To update the status of any term, it's very easy. You simply you know, count to the status and you say uh, reviewed, and that's it. You've got your um, business growth return status updated, and it's ready for the uh, next level. So let's close this business glossary. So the last thing that I want to show you is the semantic mapping that can happen between business glossary and physical models inside OEMM. So automatically OEMM has created this semantic mapping from sales at business glossary to the dimension of data warehouse. And basically what happens here is mapping the uh, terms that you have in the business glossary to the actual model that uh, or the physical model that we have harvested inside OEMM. As you can see we have all the tables here and inside the business glossary if you open the BI sample they are all map into it. So this icon means that this object has been linked and the linking here has happened automatically. So if we if we look down and we open uh, the 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 uh, entity uh, you'll be able to see also the column underneath. So we have many terms here and all these terms are being mapped into the physical uh, model that we harvested earlier. This is very helpful in case you want to do a uh, semantic lineage or what we call also a vertical lineage. So if we open again the business glossary as I have uh, showed you earlier and we go to the BI sample again and we go to one of the definitions such as the sample revenue and I right to click on that one, I say create semantic usage, you'll be able to see the actual physical uh, lineage for that term. If you want to see this graphically, you can simply click on show lineage graph, and you'll be able to see that in, in a graphical way. It works the same way if, if you go to the actual physical model, so let's go to the dimensional data warehouse in this case. Let's go to the schema, the examples, open the tables. So it's called uh, sample revenue app. So let's look for that one. Right here, we click right to click and we say, okay, it's very semantic definition. And if you want to see that semantic format, you can do that. So you click on text, and you'll be able to see the definition. So it's saying here the definition is revenue fact table. And this is uh, 
very easy uh, to trace with an OEMM. You'll be able to do the same in a graphical way. So if you want to see graphically, you can provide the click, trace the message. You select the graph tool, you click on trace, and here it goes. You'll be able to see the physical connection between the, the, the entity, uh, the term entity inside the business glossary and the actual physical uh, entity or table in the model that we have harvested. And this marks the end of the interactive demo. So to summarize everything, uh, this recording aims to give you a better overview of our enterprise data management. Um, we have mentioned the main features of OEMM, such as the ability to do data lineage, uh, to do analysis uh, for the impact, uh, the business glossary, and uh, the value of OEMM uh, for organization when it comes to data governance and uh, having more control over uh, data flow in, in a certain organization.